Hello everyone, Darren here, and welcome back to Satisfactory. Now, in the previous episode, we had just completed all of the milestones for Tier 5, allowing us to build our first manufacturer, which we've set up to make heavy modular frames. But it is being done manually for now. We have storage containers, I've got to run over to them and load it all up just to get the thing running. We've also just built our first packager, which allows us to bundle up fuel or other fluids for more convenient transport. Now today, we're going to be moving on to Tier 6, where I'm hoping to build our first jetpack, using the fuel that we've just gotten, and also start laying the groundwork for a screw factory, as it seems that we're just going to be needing quite a lot of that. So, having a look at the manufacturer and having a look at the extra milestones that we're going to be needing, turns out we need like 300 heavy modular frames and like 300 computers just to kind of advance. That requires a lot of screws, so one of the things we're going to be doing today is building an entire screw factory to hopefully supply literally just the one machine for a while, and then hopefully when we get our improved fuel generators and our increased pipeline network and all of these different things, that should be a bit more automatic in the future, but we kind of have to go through it manually for the first time. So I'm just going to pick up the heavy modular frames that are left here. I am out of screws. There is no more screws that I can run around and dump into this thing. And that's why we're going to be doing it, our, um, hopefully building a little factory for it. So, let's get started. On the right side of the screen, we have our to-do list. The first one is going to be to advance the jetpack milestone, set up temporary circuits, build a jetpack and gas mask, build a truck, and then start work on the screw factory. Now, you might remember me saying temporary quite a lot, and that's basically because I don't really want to build anything more permanent while I don't have the fuel generator, the Mark IV belts, while we don't have the thicker pipes that can carry more fluid and while we don't have trains. We want to get all of these milestones done and then we'll really get to building some big factories that'll stand the test of time, hopefully. So, for now, we can advance the jetpack milestone. We've got everything we need for it, so let's just select it again. And I basically have just run up to the um, oil area that we have and picked up a bunch of the resources that we made there. So there we go, that is the jetpack. inflated your pocket dimension and has provided a jetpack which operates on oil-based fuel for increased navigational capabilities as well as odds of survival. And there it is. So what are we missing? We're missing, of course, our circuit boards which we're going to have to make ourselves. So, the interesting thing about the jetpack, as I did a little research before getting it, is that it's not what I thought it was. It's not the hover pack. I thought it lets me, like, hover and build, but this thing will just let us get around a lot easier. But I've heard that it seems to be pretty quick at doing that. So, circuits are going to be temporary. I've got four boxes here that I've laid out. This one's full of fabric, rubber, plastic, and copper sheeting. Obviously, it is limited, right? I've just pulled the copper sheeting from over in our copper building over that way. And I obviously just made a trip up to the kind of oil area to pick up as much rubber and plastic as possible. So this and fabric. So this area is just like totally temporary, but it should produce enough stuff for us to get going. So let's go with the assembler. Just put it right in front of these two boxes here. Hook them both up. All right, and then we'll just select a circuit board. So circuit boards are advanced electronics that are used in a plethora of different ways. Two copper sheeting, four plastic, fifteen and thirty per minute. 7.5, and what I'm going to do is just massively overclock this, because I just want to make as much as we can. So normally it would be 15 megawatts of power. I think this is going to bump it up to like 50, probably. Just hook it up to that, and we could actually tell it to go straight into this box, and just disconnect this from the awesome sink. Alright, there we go. We're cracking. So what are we up to now? 65 megawatts of power. So, someone actually mentioned in the comments that overclocking the oil area like I had done um, to make the numbers kind of balance out. I think I increased the overclock of the refinery up to like 180% or something like that. I, I can't remember the exact number, but it was crazy the amount of power it's sucking down. So I have underclocked that back just so as not to waste power for no real reason. So the that area up there is going to be operating a bit slowly, but this area is totally fine. Now, while that's making advanced circuits for us, or circuit boards, I'm just going to head out here. There is a drop pod in the distance that I actually marked when I was driving past it. It's up there. So we'll just run out, get that, um, put that in the mom, start, start, you know, start getting some hard drives in the background. Hopefully we get lucky and I get an alternate screw recipe and that would actually change the entire build I've got planned for the screw factory. But if not, I'll be building the screw factory as to the current, you know, making rods and then turning rods into screws kind of system that we have. Oh, I should have made the... Oh yeah, I can't make the jetpack yet without the actual... Um, Circuit boards, of course. I was going to say, this would allow me to get up here much quicker, but it's all good. Just build the ladder. Should be no problem at all. 
All right, we are up. Ah, oh, you're killing me. All right, let's just add up another little bit to the top of that. All right, great. Oh, look at that. Circuit boards. We've actually got, I think... Oh, just thinking about it, actually. I think we have about 30 circuit boards lying in... Oh, there's more even here. In the inventory that I have that I picked up from the other crash sites. So, um... Let's see, what does this need? It needs quick wire. It doesn't need any power. Boom. Great. Easy enough. Fairly straightforward. Anything else lying around? Uh, not that I see. I think we're good to go. All right, let's start running back. So we've got more than enough circuit boards now to make that jetpack and start really advancing. And of course, we'll just, in the to-do list, toggle off the advanced jetpack. Sorry, advancing the jetpack milestone and the temporary circuits. That's all set up now. All well and good. Now we need to actually build the jetpack, build the gas mask, because of course we did unlock it at the last episode, but I didn't actually make one. And we should have everything we need. It's actually radiation back there. Interesting. And then we're going to build a truck. A few people were like, oh yeah, you should get some trucks up and running. Start moving things around. So that is something I'm gonna, I want to get doing. Again, it's kind of like, I don't know if it's just a me problem, but I'm like, oh man, I really want to get the next milestone before I actually commit to like setting some of these things up. But definitely we'll build a truck. And I'll probably set one of them up to go between the area where we're making plastic and fuel and coming back down here. What I'm probably going to do is we have the, on the map here, just to the north, the idle iron ore extraction area. Remember, there's two factories I made here, very small, that just produce iron ore, right? They don't do anything. But they have actually truck stations built into them that we just never set up. So we'll get trucks, we'll send them in there. They can pick up the ore, and I'm going to bring it to the screw factory where it's going to be smelted and turned into screws all in one place. Um, so let's see if we have enough. So in this box I should have, yeah, 36. Wow, more than I even I even thought. So we've got 53 now in total. We can check how many we've made over here. 68. Wow, that's really quick. And are we still backed up? That's good. Good to see. Yeah, so let's just get making that then. So essentially we have our jetpack, which takes a little while. Then we'll make a gas mask, and then we'll make some, what's it called, uh, filters for the gas mask, I guess. Not that I really plan on going anywhere, but we might as well just equip it all. So the gas mask requires rubber and fabric, which I have over here. Fabric and rubber. Alright, cool. So build a jetpack jet and gas mask. Now you can build... I don't think you'd ever need more than one, right? I don't think they ever run out. But it's the filters that do. I suppose if you died and you lost it or something. Um, yeah, we'll make like 20 filters, why not? And then we'll be good to go. Add a little bit of coal in my inventory from that. Boom. Alright, so, let's equip this thing. That's cool, you actually see it going in. And the jetpack. Okay. Alright, we have liftoff. So, is this the way it works that you have to touch? Yeah. Okay, yeah, so you have to put your feet on the ground in order for it to refuel. So I've got my fuel in the bottom left, 348. If I hold takeoff and just hold jump, we'll keep going, keep going, keep going. But then pressing space again, trying to like re-equip it doesn't do anything. you got to have your feet touch the ground, so not nearly as good as that hovercraft thing. I don't actually know how the hovercraft works. I just read really briefly on the wiki that these are two separate things. Um, and I know that I think the hovercraft pulls electricity from nearby power poles, so I think I don't know if it uses fuel when you're not. Anyway, we'll get to that all, all when I come across it, I'm sure. Another 33. Wow, that's crazy. We're making them really fast. Obviously, it is overclocked out of its mind right now. It's super fast. 20 per minute, basically. That should be more than enough that we need. So, we also needed circuits to make a truck. So, we should be able to make that now. Oh, yeah. This is going to be super fun. All right, great. So, let's make a truck. Um... Transportation, truck. 48 slot inventory has a built-in craft bench, can be automated to pick up and deliver resources at truck stations. 20 encased industrial beams, 50 rubber, 5 heavy modular frames, 10 circuit boards, and 15 motors. We're getting advanced stuff now, boys. All right, there we go. It's actually not as big as I thought it would be. I mean, it's much bigger than this, but it's not as much bigger than the tractor as I thought it would be. Uh, let's. Does it come in black? <laughs> All right, sweet. 
Let's check out where it's its workbench is just right around the back. People did remind me this these do have craft benches, so you don't need to go building a craft bench next to a vehicle. I always do forget that. We can make some computers right now, actually. Circuit boards again, uh, cables, plastic, and of course, lots of screws. And that's why I want to get making screws, because I actually don't produce any. The screws are all kind of made in this factory and used in this factory. The same goes for the motor factory. So there's really not that much I can do about it. So we've built a truck. Maybe we'll just go for a little drive now that we've got fuel. I might head around to the motor factory. Whoops. Although I guess that's a bit of a waste of time. Oh, I forgot to put the, um, god damn it, the hard drive into its research thing. So that'll be good to go check back on. So let's just jump up here. People have asked me, why don't I use hypertubes? Gotta be honest, not a big fan. I'll try to use them more in future with different builds and stuff of factories, but I don't really like using them for getting around. Um, I don't know, just yeah, it's a, they, they feel a little gl glitchy to me, because the way the camera jolts out to third person, I guess. So pipeline engineering will be one of the next milestones that we need to do. It doesn't really matter which one we do, I'll just leave them in the background. Um, but we want to set this up in the MOM, right? So our hard drive... Now there is actually... A lot of people kept mentioning turbo fuel, and if we add compact coal, compacted coal, we can start making turbo fuel right now. It's a little early to do that, I'm not quite ready for that, but I definitely will. So we'll save that hard drive and put it in to be scanned now. Um, and yeah, sorry, not really save it, but we'll use that hard drive in future, we'll get another one I'm sure, to make turbo fuel. Alrighty. Let's hop down to our... Oh my god, that's such a lifesaver. Boom, we are in Chonklicus. Yeah, this thing is beefy. It's just like I said about the um, heavy industrial fluid thing. Now this area, look at the way the wheels go. They like, it does seem like it's all glitchy. I haven't built any roads yet, but I'm a bit worried about that. You know, the asphalt in there looks like it's there's something wrong with it or something. I hope that's not true of everywhere because the I definitely felt it with the Explorer. You slow down driving through it. Anyways, so what I'm planning on doing is... Oh yeah, we need to try out the gas mask, actually. Perfect area for it. So I think we, we're wearing it. Does it just come on? Oh yeah. Oh right, the screen changes. I've actually never seen it before. And it's using our filters. So now we can, like, just hop up. Cool. Yeah, it's great. Really, really good. We'll have to go to different areas where we see slugs and there's places that we can use these gas masks and I've seen loads of them. And there's whole areas of the map in Shroud and this stuff, so look forward to checking it out. So I'm going to get rid of the elevator. And we'll set... Does this ever come back off? There we go. Um, and we'll set another one up later on when we feel like we're actually making parts. But what I want to do is build a screw factory somewhere out here. Um, so I'm just going to get rid of this quartz crystal that's kind of lying around here and then just lay the foundations. I have a, a kind of a build in mind for how I want to build this. I think we can use nine smelters. And then, if I've got the time, we can set up the truck station and everything. Uh, so I'm just going to clear a few of these. Actually, we could just use Nobelisks, right? Yeah. Let's use Nobelisks just to get rid of all this stuff. Get rid of some of these rocks as well. Flatten out the terrain. I think I'm going to go with something like a 10 by 10. Maybe a 12 by 12 kind of rough area. That rock can't be removed. Is there any other rocks that could be removed? Sorry, I just got distracted there. I thought someone was coming into my room. <laughs> uh. Alright, that should be good. So this, this place shouldn't be too big. I've actually got schematics and a design on paper for making it quite huge. Because a truck station can take... It has two outputs. So you could have 500... Like, I've got belts of 270. So I could have belts of, you know, taking in resources of 540 and, you know, smelting all of that and making screws, something like 2,000 screws a minute. So I did work all that out, but I think I'm going to build half that factory, and that should be fine. Which should be about 1,000 screws a minute, so we should have a lot. Um, and I'm hoping that it will be sort of future-proof, where I can build it, like, I, if I get better belts and things like that, we can just expand it rather than, uh, and upgrade it, rather than have to, like, redo too much of it. So I'm trying to build it with that in mind. All right, so let's get started on this screw factory. So we'll just start off with our very first foundation. Aligned to the world grid, nice and high. I want to make sure we're just over that rock, because that's going to be the rock that's in the way. So just about there. 
All right, and that just gets us started. So from here, we'll go with a, that's all the way out. I don't know, let's just go as far out as we can here to the right. So that's seven, eight, nine, and 10. We'll start off with a 10 by 10. Oh man, I just want to hit nine. Can I not do that? <laughs> there we go, God. All right, I guess it's just easier to build 10 and then just get rid of the one that's on the end that's protruding. Let's do that. All right, cool. So what I'm, what I'm going to do for this build is basically do what I've been doing for my previous builds, which is essentially have logistics floors every second floor and have um, kind of machine floors and then equally, like kind of not equally, but space them out nicely with walkways in between and everything. So it's not going to be a super compact build, but I am wary of the space that this could take up. And we're going to have, a, hopefully, a truck station built in as well on one of the bottom floors that will come later. Um, so there we go. So we are concreted out of our minds for a 10x10, 10 10, I think, here on the bottom. Let's just build a little lookout tower pop-up. So unlike the hovercraft pack, I won't be able to hover and build, which I was hoping to do. Oh my goodness, that's why. Just hop back up here real quick. Alrighty. So, what do we got? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 10. 10 by 10. There we go. So, we'll just start with a... I gotta put all the foundations down first. So, the one, well, almost all. One of the first things we need to do is just build two level here. And then start with foundations just up above that. That's gonna be two in height. Um, yeah, two in height like this. And then it needs actually one below it. So just run down to the bottom. So there's going to be a lot of concrete needed. And the reason I have one down below is because it's to allow for the walkways. And we'll just extend this all the way out. Bring this all the way out as well. And that'll be the first floor essentially done. We're just going to floor, go floor by floor, maybe do two or three, and then have a stairwell in the middle. I think I said in the motor factory build, something big I kind of learned from that was... You know, plan out where how you're going to get around the factory. <laughs> uh, and that actually really, really helps certain things. Alright, we've already spent like 500 concrete or something for my inventory. But we've got plenty that we can just go grab. And then we're going to need all the floors. So just to make the place look somewhat nicer, just for now, we'll just build two little walls on either side. We don't have to wall off the whole thing just yet. And then we can change the layout if we're not happy with something as well. And not have to redo all the walls. But at least this looks like now it's been propped up by something. Kind of. So my plan, I guess, is in the center is to have the walkways. Somewhere here in the center. And to have nine smelters is what we're going to need. But it's not going to be on this floor. The smelters will be up above. This floor is for logistics. Taking in the truck input, having things arranged below, and then feeding up to smelters. Um, that's basically the idea, as we've done before. So we'll just, again, build another tower just on the outside now. Alrighty, should be good. So again, I have to build another. Now, I could have built them at size 2, but that's actually not what I want to do. We want to build at size 1, in terms of foundational width and height. Um, so that I can just remove them where we put machines. And we can t change them to asphalt so I know where I'm going to be walking around as well, which really helps. Is that me out of concrete? Holy crap. Uh, I don't know if we're going to make it. I don't think I'll make it. Just about. Nice. Yeah, so much easier to get around with that. This is actually backed up right now, so let's just take as much as we can. I'll just run back over. Oh my god, I'm loving the jetpack. So good. How good is that? So it's just a shame I just can't build like this. <laughs> Not yet, anyway. We're close. Kind of. <laughs> All right, with this first floor done, we can actually see some progress, start putting down some machines. That's the important thing. Okay, so, machines. 
We want to have smelters, so somewhere in the center. So what's the center of one, two, three, four, five? One, two, three, four, five. So let's just say, I don't know, three, four, five, five in. We'll build a little thing here in the center. Yeah. Just so I remember where that is. All right, so that's where it's going to go. And now we can just... And what I mean by that, that's the central walkway place. Now, we could make it too thick. I'm actually going to make it one thick, so we're going to be off-center for a little minute here. Not for long. We'll fix it. It only needs to be one thick, and we'll have the stairwells and also glass frames so that we can see things rising up between the floors. Should look good. Um, okay, so what we want to do is go with asphalt, and we'll paint this out. This is going to be one of the first walkways. This will be another one. Don't know if it's going to go all the way around just yet. What we'll have to do is see how big the smelters are going to be. And we want to put them basically in the center of this area. Right about there. And aligned with the thing as well. Alright, good. So they'll be feeding out the opposite way. Actually, I think I will turn them this way. I think that'll be better. Like I said, I'm going to do half the factory. So we'll just do one side. Because we could have this side duplicated on the other side. If we wanted to. So is that 9? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Alright, more than I, totally more than I need. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So get rid of this one. And that's our size. Perfect, actually, because bring this in. The mom has just gotten done. We'll see what we got in this thing as well, just to see is it going to help us. So annoyingly, I have to get rid of these. Um, go back like this all right so that gives us half like almost like half a foundation to the left to the right and we should have the same on this side now yep all right cool oh but I'll have to make it another mistake I'm so sorry I gotta um, lower this area but at least we know the size now so we got to sink this foundation in. And that'll just look a little bit nicer. I'll just copy those buildings back over. Or those, um... I actually, I always call these things buildings, even though they're machines. But in the builder list, they are actually called buildings. So I guess I'm not terribly out of step calling them that. Is that, is that aligned? That is aligned. Okay, good. All right, last time. <laughs> it's so finicky sometimes getting this right, but... This should make it look a little bit nicer, at least this is... And it keeps the theme, actually, that I've got with all my other factories, at least, which is kind of cool. And maybe we'll color them differently as well. And then we can put up the guardrails that go around this. So ultimately, what this is going to have is these things feeding up. Conveyor floor holes. Alright, nice. And we'll just go around the other side. And then I'll run up and check what we got in the man. Oh, actually, guess so we don't have to run up. We can just build it here. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Alright, great. So there we go. So let's just check the man really quickly. I know you're probably dying to know what we got. Alright, we have alternate recipe for fine black powder. It takes in two sulfur and one compact coal, and we get black powder out of it. Hmm. Alternate for iron wire. So we get wire out of iron ingots. Or we can have steamed copper sheets. Three copper ingots, water, and copper sheets. 15 per minute, 22 and a half per minute, 22 and a half. I feel like none of this is really that good. Mixing copper with water sounds awful to me. That sounds like such a logistical nightmare. Uh, I don't really think I'd need to change iron into wire. I mean, what are the current rates that I guess we get for that? 15 copper into 30 wire. And this is offering me five iron into, and we get nine wire, 30 per minute. 22.5 per minute is what you get out of that. Excuse me, 30 per minute. It's 15. I don't know. That doesn't seem... Sorry, my 
thing is moving me forward. That doesn't seem good to me at all. And then black powder, like, I don't know. Does this, is this better? How do we make black powder? Let me just recheck that. It's made an assembler, is it? All right. It's coal and sulfur. So 15 regular coal and one sulfur. 15 per minute. What do we get out of this one? 30 per minute? It doesn't seem good to me at all. None of these seem like good options. I might just go with this so it's different. Again, black powder, I'm not sure how important that is, but I'll just go with this one then. In case we ever have a problem with making wire, uh, iron, sorry, wire, <laughs> wire. And uh, we need it, I'm just gonna go with that one then. I really just don't think copper sheeting mixes it. It's like copper mixes it water. One last thing, just before I do, it keeps running me forward every time I click out of that um, machine, by the way. Sorry to be so indecisive, but, and by the way, thanks for all the positive comments on the previous one. People were like, no, oh, no, you made the right choice. So I'm happy with that. So copper sheets, it's just copper ingots and we get copper sheets. Why on earth would you mix it with water just to get like a tiny bit more out of it? I just feel like that is so not good. All right then, so yeah, we'll just go with, I'll just go with this. I don't, I don't know, everything seems like a pretty mundane choice to me. Sorry for spending so long on it. Um, all right, well anyway, back to, back to this. We'll just start feeding these up. So essentially we have to look at this. Is it feeding the right way? Yeah. The first time I ever did this, when I was over at the motor factory, this was facing the wrong way. And you can still hook them up. And I was like, oh my God, I had to redo so many machines. I think it was like 30 constructors or something. And it all, yeah, when you click to place it down, it just like rotates itself. Not really sure why it does that. You think when it's only got like one option, like the one possibility right in front of it, it would somehow notice, snap in. Easier said than done, I guess, but. So this one has to be the receiver, right? There we go. Good job. I actually just got a new mouse. Uh, I'm trying to feel it out. I try to get a mouse that's actually like really quiet for clicks because I've moved my microphone basically right over my mouse hand. And um, in one of the videos I did it, you could just hear constant clicking. Nobody mentioned it. I just got really annoyed by it. So um, I bought a new mouse that hopefully will, hopefully at least drowns it out, but I'm getting used to it. It's kind of a weird shape for my hand. All right, not that we need to do this, but I'd like to just cordon this off as we do. All right, great, there we go. So that is the smelter part done. Um, what we probably have here then, so this is gonna be a walkway that leads to the other side of the factory. And this is gonna be the innards of the factory where we'll have glass cases and stuff that we can see stuff coming up and out. Um, in fact, we could even just see that now. So I know that it's gonna be probably to there. Yeah. Okay, and let's just go with walls full frames, scroll that all the way over to here. Something like that and we'll see things come up. All right, cool. This area then instead is gonna be like moving up, uh, up and down stairs. So let's make our first stairwell now because we're gonna be using it quite a bit. Um, so the basic plan is just to have a sort of a doorway and a basic walkway. So organization, we'll go down to you, there is actually stairs in the game, but I like using uh, this instead. Catwalk, catwalk crossings. Just trying to think where the door is going to be. Yeah, that's fine. Alright, and our stairs can go down. If I need to change these, then that's fine. No big deal. All right, good. So there'll be another thing here, just like this, I guess, something like this. It's basically off limits, and that'll be our stairs that we go up. I might, you know, change the layout of the stairs or whatever. It's fine, just for now, for us to be able to get up, up and down, it's, it's totally okay. Um. All right, good, so there we go. Down we go, and around and down. We could just have it go down twice, but I want to keep it to two across, and. Probably be a bit better this way. Um, I do feel like though there's 
probably would look better if we came in and we could just go straight upstairs. But whatever. So like I said, the layout might change slightly, but it's the same principal idea. Um, and that can stay the way it is. And then we'll have stairs on the other side too. But for now, that's all good. We can get up and down. And I can just fly up and down now, I guess, as well, which is nice. So, um, these all have to make iron. We'll copy the settings. Just go one by one on each of these. Settings pasted. Excellent. All right. So, somewhere down here is going to be where the truck depot is. I'm not going to do that one just yet. We can almost just have a big storage thing and manually feed it with ore and then set up our route after it starts powering on. So that's the basic thing. The next thing then will be another two floors up, right? So this one's gonna be like that. And then we need a fresh set of walkways out this side. And it might have to go much bigger. I don't, I'm not really too sure, we'll see. No vents in this factory either. They're just gonna have to have a smelter floor and deal with it. All right, I'm just gonna jump up to that now. And just to remember, whoops, where this is, we'll just stack this out. Great. And then this will be the wall here. So that'll be the, to join onto the stairway. Ah, this is a logistical floor, so we actually don't need that technically. This is only going to be a height of two. Remember, Effectively, what's going to happen is this will take in stuff that comes up from the things over there. So the I'm so bad at explaining things today. I've been kind of sick the last couple of days, <laughs> so um, I just feel like my mind is so scatterbrained right now. I know what I mean, but I'm not ar articulating it very well. And I just didn't want to go any longer without videos, because I missed already basically two uploads of this. So anyway, essentially, here is where we're going to have things feeding up, right? So whatever's coming down, so uh, st uh, iron ingots. Iron ingots are going to come up to here. This is the logistical floor. Here's where we get to distribute it to the machines up above. So we just have to lay out some basic foundations and then do the foundations above us, and then we can kind of see where everything's going to have to be fed up, and then that's how we decide how the logistics get done. Yeah, if that makes sense. I don't know what the hell just happened there. Okay, fine. <laughs> All right, cool. Let's go straight across, straight across. And then we need to come up again. So that's just only a height of two for the logistical floors. So that's totally fine to be about there. And now this is the real important floor where we get to decide how things look. So this is going to have to be, again, these logistical floors need a double layered flooring to them. And that way we can decide where it's going to be sunken in and where it's not going to be sunken in. Now, I think what we need for this, essentially, it's something like... If we're taking in 270... Um, divided by 9, that's 30 for each smelter. That's why we have 9 smelters. That's fine. The smelters then produce 30 each. So what we're going to need then is constructors that are making rods. 15 per minute. 15 per minute. So we need twice as many of them. We need 18. Um, so room for 18 in total. And then room to move around as well. So the factory, it should almost be, in a way, done in the reverse order with the smelters on top, because that's the fewest amount of machines. Because we're effectively going to have an upside down triangle here, where the floors are going to get bigger and bigger each time on the way up. But it could look kind of cool, so we'll just leave it, see how it all works out. Yeah, and then we need the stairwell to go all the way upstairs, all the way up to here, eventually. Alright, I'm going to build another watchtower up here, and then we can build from a pie, maybe a little bit quicker. Alrighty. Okay. So it should really start taking shape just after this floor is done. Something like that. And is that as wide out as we need to go? I think we need to go wider. Alrighty, so I know that this area here is going to be the glass panel floors. The windows that will see everything. Mm -hmm. Something like that. There might be a bit more of a gap or not. Doesn't really matter. And then we're going to have our asphalt that goes across here where we can walk over that. It's our pathway. And then here, 
is where we're essentially going to have our machines. And we need 18 of them. So I just want to double check that I've gotten this right. I haven't made a mistake. So this needs to come out further. Whoops. Now for 18 machines, I guess I have to figure out how wide across we need to go. We want to make use of this entire space though, basically. And have it be sunken down. It should look better that way. Is that as far as we need to go? Yep. Alright, so what are we dealing with? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight across. Six, twelve, eighteen. So we can do six per row. That might make the most sense, yeah? And that's only three rows out of constructors. And the constructors have to be in the middle of the uh, foundation, like here. So we'll just start it off there. Mm, yep, facing that way I think is good. Okay, so I do need to just actually, if we're going to do it six, we'll start there instead. Sorry about that. Good to get it right though. So one, two, three, four, six. All right, cool. So we've got this kind of big gap on either side of it. It's not a really big deal. Uh, these machines, they kind of spill over the edges anyway, so it'll actually look fine. Um, so then what we'll just do really quickly is just get rid of all this. We know we need that gap to be the same basically everywhere. Lay out these foundations to just fit. Effectively like that. But they gotta gotta come out even further. I think it has to go out two more, probably. Alrighty, so that should be the area that we're working with for all these machines, because they need a decent gap between them for the floor holes. So we could just make it line up uh, where they're just evenly spaced, so like this. Alright, so that's all rods, remember, and then we'll just add another layer of that, and that'll be the final layer. It's gonna look really weird when we step away from it and have a look from the distance. It's looking good though, I think. It's coming together. Um, so then we'll just move this out to here. Again, lined up neatly. Six across. Two, three, four, five, and six. Alrighty, there we go. So let's just get some height on this. So that's gonna be 18. 18 constructors doing iron rods. Let's just copy in the Iron rod settings right now. Pasted, pasted. And then above us, I think it's 27, I want to say, more constructors, so it's a lot. But that's going to be us settled for screws for a while. And then we can get our truck to pick it up and deliver it to the manufacturer or just deliver it wherever we need to if we end up building the manufacturer somewhere else, you know? It's an investment, <laughs> this building, kind of. And then, like I said, we can double it. This, this side can be totally mirrored on the other side if we decide to use the other output. And that's not even counting the fact that we have the belts that, that could be at tier four. So it could be even more than that, really. But let's just, let's not get too crazy. <laughs> all right, so they're all set. So now we need to just add in the floor holes. We can get some distance to make it look a little bit nicer rather than shoving it in. Well, let's just actually check out the differences between the two. If we go with one right there. So this is what this one would look like. This is what this one would look like. So this one has the tube, and it looks actually offset, whereas this one looks like it feeds straight in. So that looks a bit better, I think. So we'll go with that style. So that means we got to get right up in its face, basically. Right up in its face. To the point where you're like, no, that must be clipping, but apparently not. 
I assume it's the same for coming out, so we'll just keep it the same. Alright, good. And uh, we basically have to do that everywhere. So, let's do this as quick as we can. Alright. And then just both sides of it then. Alright, we are good to go. So now we need to add in a bunch of these. Uh, so let's do all the inputs, or the outputs first. And that way, we'll just do face all the same way, and then we'll switch it around when we get to the other side. 18 machines in total. Six. Done. Let's do these other six. Each of them need two. It's such an extra effort doing all this, but it does keep things looking really neat and nice. And then maybe we can put the power breakers in on the floors as well if we need to. Although I don't, I think for a build like this we really don't need to. It makes a lot more sense over in the motor factory build where there's so many different types of things going on. Whereas this is just making screws. Like it's making, I guess it's smelting iron. Smelting iron, making rods, and then making screws, and that's it. Whereas the other place is making rotors and stators, and the final product is motors. It's making steel and iron. So many different things got copper inputs. So let's switch it now to an output. I wonder will they ever consider adding blueprints to the game where it's like I could just copy and paste this now, you know? Like Factorio has that. I don't know if they've ever said they wouldn't do this. Oh shit. Because um, it is strange that you have to do this like manual. I would have thought that one of the first things they could do in the game, development wise, is allow you to copy and paste things, you know? But it seems like they don't want you, they want you to be the one doing things very manually, like it seems by design. I wonder what the reasoning is for that. I feel like making it a late game thing that you unlock blueprints, you can save a certain amount maybe, or I don't know. You want to make people work for it a bit better. Or it's like you can't maybe copy more than 10 objects. So it's like, okay, we can copy this layout. You know, I have built a constructor with two floor holes and two elevators. That's um, five things, you know, it's a, fi it's a five object copy. So it's like, yeah, just copy, paste, 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 paste. It'd be nice, you know. I'm sure there's probably a mod that does it. All right, there we go. Get some distance. That's what we got, 18 constructors with their floor holes in place. Uh, so, you know what's up next, another floor. We have to go, this one needs to go up three. And then it's our logistical floor above this. And then a floor above that is, um... Oh yeah, this is regular, isn't it? Yeah. The floor above that's going to be, obviously, then the... <laughs> Why can't I talk? Logistics? Yes. Logistics. And then the final floor with the constructors. 27 of them, I want to say. Uh oh What's wrong here? Oh, this comes out too far. That's okay. Alrighty. Because the reason for that is this will technically go out this way. Alright, good. So that's the height that we're working with. This is just a logistics floor, so it doesn't need two layers, it just needs the one. <laughs> I guess it is quite helpful. I was thinking like, oh no, it's not the hover pack that I really, really wanted. I'll just bring this all the way out. We're probably gonna need it. And then I can just trim away anything we don't need. There we go, the next floor. This will be logistics again, and then we need to go up another two. And 
then we need to do our two layers, right? So there's the first one and there's the bottom one. Now for 27, what would that be? 27. 5.4. Yeah, I'm not going to build nine across. The reason is, so that's, we need 27 machines. You could build three layers of nine constructors. The issue, though, is that the amount that we can get out of one constructor is too much to handle on a belt like that. So if we're thinking of how we're going to build the, excuse me, logistics below, it's 40 per minute. So, you know, what's 270, which is my best belt right now, Divided by 40 is 6.75, so the most I can really have is six machines feeding onto one line without having to break it up. And that was one of the most annoying things doing that over in the motor factory was I must have had like 10 machines in a, in a row, which looked nice, but then you have to go underneath it and figure out splitting belts and stuff. It's like, oh my god, the hassle. So what I'll do is just build to the size that I know I can the belt can carry, right? Which makes a lot more sense. Again, like I said, I've learned a lot from that previous build. It was a, it was a nightmare experiment, but... It should save me time in the long run to kind of implement these things that I've learned. I'm just going to do this again. We're just going to floor this whole area out. Again, I can just trim away whatever we don't need. And that way it's a lot less painstaking than the way I was just doing it moments ago. <laughs> so much concrete. They were getting kind of low. It's 70 per lane. Alright, while we're out here, we'll just run over, grab some more concrete, and then get finalizing this floor. We can actually just hop straight over to this now. That's how tall we're building. Looks kind of cool. <laughs> Not gonna lie, it looks kind of cool. Alright, just pick up all that concrete again. Off we go. I don't think I'll be easily able to jump up to that. Oh no. It was in this moment he knew he messed up. It's okay, I saved a little bit of fuel for me. All right, we'll just make our way to the top, but we have to just do this last of four. So just so I don't forget, so... Smelters. Yeah, nine smelters up to logistics. Whoops. And then we're up to 18 constructors making rods. That's going to be fed up then up here to the next logistical floor. And then we go up even higher to the final floor to do our screws, basically. Huge amounts of screws. Um, and this is all paved mostly for... So yeah, I gotta lay it out. So it's gonna be five rows of six again. If I can only do six machines, it'll need to be five rows with less on the final row. row. Um, and that should work out. So again, we'll keep the glass containers in the center so that we can see everything. I think that should look kind of nice. So what we'll do is we'll just pave this as asphalt. Copy the asphalt. It'll be the same width, but this floor will be longer than the previous floors below it. So we're looking at here. Okay, so before we add more stuff in, we can just start laying out what it's going to be like. We could actually... Oh, I know what's going to look really cool with this. That I'll show you in a second. I just realized something. That the trucks... This will... Anyway, yeah. It, it should look good. <laughs> I just realized it's like, oh, actually, this is going to look good. <laughs> Alright, we'll do this. Actually, these can face the other way. Weirdly, I think. Because the floor... Yeah, I think that'll make sense. There's a big, actually, big thing to check. But it should make sense. I, I mean, I suppose I can change things around whatever way I want on the floor below. But the steel faces into the glass cases. The glass cases then comes back out. Yeah, it might make a little bit more sense just to have them facing this way. So that's six. Okay. So that's six. Six. 
6, 12, 18, 24. Oh my god, it has to go so far. And this would be 32, but it'll be a shorter lane. Alright, so let's just gain some height for this. Hopefully I have all the materials I need, actually. It's quite a lot. Alright, cool. So, yep, this should be straightforward enough. Two, three, four, five, and six. Two, three, four, five, and six. Aha! We're out. Alright, we'll have to make a dash over towards... Let's drive over and load up our truck or something. It'd be kind of cool. What am I missing? Cables. Let's wait for that autosave. There we go. Um, yeah, just really quickly, actually. So what else do I need to make constructors? Just want to make sure I've got enough even for the last few things. Uh, more reinforced plates. Yeah, we can get that here. Alright, so that's fine. And then we just need the cable. That was weird. It sounded like an electric vehicle there for a second. There was no, like, revving of the engine. The shortest journey of all time. Alright. Alright, that's where our wire is being produced. This is our cable. Do I've got much room for it? I actually kinda don't. Uh, just get rid of some concrete. Feels bad, man, but we'll just take in 200 cable. Yeah, I'm so not sense uh, used to the sensitivity of this goddamn mouse yet. Keeps um, I tried to set the DPI to be the exact same, but it feels different. I keep overshooting things. I'll get used to it, though. I'm happy with it so far. It feels good. I, c I can't actually remember what it's called, but it's like a Logitech silent mouse. Um, MSX3 or something like that, I think. Oh yeah, so looking at this now, do you see? This would be perfect to have the truck stop like within the state, like within the building underneath. So we could extend pillars down or something. Um, and this would be like the area the trucks drive in. That could look kind of cool, I think. Look at all this flooring that we've got to do as well. Holy crap. All right, let's just make it back up to the top again. Take this ladder that we just built. Alright, good. So, yeah, let's just continue on. So, boom. Another line of six out this way. So, the interesting thing then, so 6, 12, 18, 24, and then we need seven, so we just need three more. Three is a bit of an uneven number for what we want to do, but let's just do this instead. We'll just put it in the center, offset it a bit. Cool. Good night. Alrighty. That should be that. Can't take this back up yet. Alright, that's okay. Don't know why I have so much wire actually thinking about it. I do have a lot. Alright, so the next thing then with all of these is obviously setting them all to be screws, copy and pasting that applying it to everything, and then adding in all of the floor holes. So I'll just do that and fast forward through it. Alrighty, there we go. So basically, 27 constructors all queued up for screws with belts feeding up and down either side of it. So, what I'm gonna do now is just add in the extra glass flooring, uh, seal this place off, and then that'll probably be it for this episode, while I kind of figure out then what's gonna be needed for the logistics in the next one. Um, but yeah, basically, this could just be walls that go to here, I think. Pretty much right across the board. And then on the next floor up, that'll be glass again. 
Now remember, this isn't actually the external of the building. This will be the inside. This is an inner tube, as it were. It's going to basically look like this. So I'll try to do as much of it on camera as I, as I can, where we go up the stairs, up like this, and then we're on the floor, and we can see all the stuff flowing up. That's the idea, anyway. And then we, if we want to get to the next floor, you know, we just go back in, go back up, and then maybe on the other side or somewhere in here, the other side, one could be a stairwell and one could be hypertubes. Because maybe we could do about, I think there's roughly four floors here that are important anyway. Um, so you could just go one, two, three, four and have them go to every floor. That was a nice little rhyme. Uh, so I think that's basically how it's going to kind of shape out. So I'll probably encase this place in a sort of a box. And then in between episodes, I'll sort of feel out what rough size we're going to have for the truck coming through. Um, but the idea would be that I'll just make this journey once and then we'll kind of wrap it up there. As we get some distance on this place, see what it looks like as well. But the journey will be like coming in here, unloading, and it all gets picked up by all of those... So the ore, right? We unload just 270 ore. Gets picked up by all of those smelters. And then the journey goes back out. So we'll have trucks doing alternate things. You don't want trucks picking up two different types of goods, trying to like sort it all out. I mean, you could do that, but it's a bit too complicated and too messy and prone to breaking. Whereas this truck will probably just always just have just, just one on the loop going over, for now anyway, obviously. obviously picking up as much ore as it can and then bringing it to the place that needs to. And I think we're making more than 270. If not, we definitely can be uh, just down here. So this is basically where we're going to be pulling up shop. And then I'll need a place where we distribute fuel as well, I guess, a fuel station. Uh, so we'll just pull up and say, hey, how's it going? Load everything into this thing. And obviously it'll be done manu or automatically. It's going to take quite a while to load this first bit. We could just move now. Drive down to the next one to give it time to recover. Load on this one as well. Really, this should, to be honest, should just have one platform. It's a bit weird that's separated the way it is, but that is the way I've chosen to do it, I guess. And then the route that I'll probably take is just driving all the way down here, taking a right, turning around, and then coming back up to where our entrance is going to be. So it's just going to be a little closed loop delivering ore from those miners. Very small distance it's traveling, but it is sort of a temporary thing. I feel like one day I'll probably move this stuff further out, especially as we go further and further looking for energy and where I decide to set up the fuel. That's all going to be very important. This factory needs to be knocked down as well. It's basically just like so redundant and old now. It needs to be totally redone. But this is where we're going to go and obviously we can drive the truck through the gas. No big deal come into our little truck stop and bay in here and unload whatever amount we just put into it, you know? Look at that. Just full now of iron ore. Distribute it. The, all the smelters will activate. And this is why I was saying, like, we could have it... Whatever the truck stop here is, we could just distribute it right over to the other side. Duplicate this entire building effectively, you know? Have nine on the opposite side. Watch it all flow up. Um, and I'll probably leave room for that, in fact. I think... I'll probably only have nine smelters using two elevator belts going up. So that way we could have nine on this side using two going up. And then try to wrap it on both sides. Maybe on the other side, the truck station could be for taking screws, right? So if we have a truck stop on this side coming out this way, or going that way, it doesn't really matter. And um, this could be where the screws come down. That might work. So that's basically going to be it. So it's, it's a half build for now, but we should be able to get it done in the next one. Start getting tons of screws and then advancing all of our milestones because we just need screws to make computers and to make heavy frames. And that's just what we need to get the next few milestones done. So that's going to be it for now. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Hey guys, thank you very much for watching. And remember, if you want to support the channel directly, you can click the join button to become a channel member. Doing so will get your name in the credits as well as loyalty badges and emotes to use in the comments. You'll also get exclusive access to my Discord where there's dedicated channels for each series I'm doing. That's a great place just to meet others and make some friends.